back with another Savage video. Thanks to everyone liking, sharing, and commenting on my videos and subscribing to my channel. You guys are freaking awesome and definitely rock stars in my book. And you guys are definitely keeping me busy in the comments as well. So I do appreciate that. There's something we really need to talk about. Long ago, over 10 years now, blockchains promised to provide a permissionless way to transfer value over a peer-to-peer -peer network. A few years later came smart contracts, and they were supposed to provide an even fairer and more transparent way to make trades and transfer value. We're now learning that this goal has failed on a lot of networks, largely due to arbitrage bots exploiting these built-in trading opportunities when used in conjunction with decentralized exchanges and the proliferation of these DEXs has exacerbated the problem. It's a dirty little secret that no one really talked about in the mining world until now. Why now? Because every time you mention EIP-1559 opposition, the devs claim that the miners should be exploiting MEV and that we should be happy with having MEV. The devs claim that the miners still have this capability that they're not profiting from and they should be using it. It's this dirty little secret that no one in the mining world really talked about or even knew about until now. Why is it now? Because every time you mention opposition to EIP-1559, then the devs throw it out there like we are supposed to know what this thing is that we're supposed to be exploiting and gaining value from, and we don't even know what it is. EIP-1559 is a controversial change being implemented on Ethereum sometime this summer. Check out my other videos on EIP-1559 to see what it's all about. Just understand that for this video, in response to its opposition, devs say miners still have this. So what exactly am I talking about here? I'm talking about minor extracted value. They call it minor extracted value. It should be maximal extracted value, but we'll get into that in a minute. The devs think that we should just be happy with it. Think about this for a second. Miners are being unfairly labeled and responsible for exploiting MEV when we didn't even know what it was. The root cause of this mislabeling is when the Ethereum devs talk about miners, they are lumping all miners into one group, small pools, large pools, hobby miners, home miners, game, gamer miners, medium-sized mining farms, large farms, ASIC farms, etc. It's all one thing to them. This is probably part of the problem and where a lot of the friction comes from since miners are just one part of a much more diverse community that shouldn't be considered all the same thing. When I say miners, I'm not referring to mining pools, just to be clear. I'm referring to home miners, hobby miners, you know, mining farms. That's what I'm referring to whenever I say miners. If I am talking about a mining pool, I will say mining pool. So what exactly is MEV? Well, we've all seen these videos of Wall Street, or if you've been on Wall Street, you've seen the trading floor where people are screaming, buy, 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 and sell, 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 and you know, throwing up pieces of paper and pencils flying everywhere, right? That's basically what is going on inside of the Ethereum memory pool, which is the basket or the bucket of unverified, unconfirmed transactions waiting to be confirmed by a miner somewhere. These are high frequency traders and, and that same technique trying to make money off of other people's trades using arbitrage techniques is what's happening inside Ethereum's mempool every millisecond of every 13 second block. The mempool is referred to as the dark forest and there is a nonstop war going on inside of it. And by dark forest, it's like saying that no one really makes it out alive, right? If Ethereum blockchain itself is the battleground, then the mempool is the dark forest. These bots are exploiting weaknesses and inefficiencies in the consensus layer of Ethereum. The bots usually run on network latency optimized systems that can access the mempool fast enough to front run, meaning to anticipate and exploit ordinary user transactions to and from the DEXs, bidding on the gas fees to get their transactions in the desired order. Oftentimes, send sandwiching a user's transaction between their own to profit off the user's trade. This technique is called minor extracted value. Arbitrage bot MEV allows permissionless transaction reordering, inserting new transactions or delaying transactions altogether, basically censoring, and that's not a good thing. There are many different ways to exploit this Ethereum flaw. 
but this conflation between miners and bots is ridiculous. Although there may be some evidence that mining pools have connected to a third party, possibly outsourcing an arbitrage bot to exploit the MEV, but I doubt very seriously that any of them are dispersing these profits to the miners attached to their pool. To continue explaining this, using a fundamental flaw in Ethereum consensus protocol, arbitrage trading bots can permissionlessly extract value using mempool analysis to observe profitable trades or liquidations. Sometimes these trades have a lot of slippage in them and that can be exploited as well. They can plug in their own trade and up the gas fees enough to beat out the perceived profitable trade in the transaction mempool with their own or even sandwich the trade between their own transactions. This can happen using bots, but even miners can employ a similar capability since they are the ones forming the blocks and have the final say in how transactions are ordered, which is probably why they call it miner extracted value, even though miners like us aren't really involved. Only one address or one entity, one miner, can commit the order of transactions to the blockchain. Basically, whoever forms the blocks on a blockchain, any smart contract blockchain where the mempool is transparent could exploit some level of this maximal extractable value. There are gangs of market making companies, bots and developers relentlessly analyzing the mempool for exploits and attacking the Ethereum network at the expense of its users. It used to be referred to as miner extracted value in Ethereum since miners are the ones committing the transactions to the blockchain, like I said earlier. But in reality, as Ethereum is being used primarily for DeFi and NFTs, and not just basic transactions with simple 21,000 gas fees, trading bots are extracting more value than ever in this way. So it should be called maximal extractable value, leaving the innocent miners out of it. Since the name has miner in it, we're being labeled as the problem whenever technically we have nothing to do with it. So why is all this so important? The Flashbots, through their analysis, found 314 million worth of MEV since January 1st of 2020. And that, that included 4.5 million in wasted gas fees on failed MEV transactions. That's equivalent to 4,500 Ethereum blocks of wasted block space. These failed transactions create network congestion and increase gas fees for no other reason than to take advantage of this fundamental Ethereum flaw and ultimately negatively affects users. How would you use this exploit? You could arbitrage on Uniswap, basically the first person to do a trade after the price of the asset changes will get arbitrage profits anyway. This That way is like kind of benign since someone is gonna get it no matter what. This is a passive exploit of the mempool. The other more malicious ways include, one, one way would be to for some for someone to see a transaction in the mempool with a generous slippage limit you can cause that transaction to trade at a worse price by trading ahead of it front running and then place a trade after it back running to lock in your profits basically sandwiching this one trade in between your two trades these slippage limits are another factor analyzed by these advanced trading bots to front run, you up your gas fee a little bit to get your transaction higher in the queue. Front running bots then front run each other. Each time increases gas fees slightly. Once you replace the transaction with another identical one, all the previous transactions are removed or if new transactions are required based on the specific exploit and using another smart contract, then the self-destruct can be used to remove or essentially disable the unprofitable transaction. The bots are even colluding with each other, brute forcing scenarios against the mempool to see who can be the most profitable. Some ways to combat MEV, maximal extractable value. One way would be through obfuscation. And that would be basically disguising a transaction to where it didn't really have MEV opportunity and kind of cloaking it and making it not a, not being a, a, an attractive source or an attractive trade arbitrage opportunity. You could also do a commit and reveal where the transaction is actually committed prior to it being revealed as to what the transaction actually is. You could also separate the transaction from the ordering. So it you could say that it doesn't matter when where the transaction is or, is in the order of transactions. 
You would just say whether or not you accept the transaction or not. And all this stuff that I've just talked about is the real problem with Ethereum, and that is what the devs should be addressing instead of worrying about burning fees with EIP-1559. Because this is the real threat. The threat is not miners getting paid too much for security or whatever, whatever they try to throw out there. This is the threat. This is the problem. So get your shit together, Ethereum. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. <sighs> Had to get all that off my chest. You guys are awesome. If you thought that this was entertaining or educational in any way, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. You know the drill. You know what you got to do. You got to stay savage, everybody.